Welcome back, Everyday Business Leaders. I'm Melanie Ake, your host for the show today, coming to you from JP the Geek Studios in Greenwood, Indiana. I'm thrilled to have you here with us, and we're going to connect and celebrate a remarkable business and community leader today in our very own Indianapolis area. Remember to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you will never miss an episode. Today, we have another exciting segment in store for you on business innovation and an inspirational leader. Today, we're going to be talking about Book Pillows of Hope with our own Kathy Buck. Welcome, Kathy. Hi. Thank you, Melanie. This is really awesome to have you here. I uh, heard your story when you first told me a couple of years ago, in fact, and I thought, I really want to celebrate this because there's a lot of people in the community that are doing things amazing that nobody knows about, and I think this is one of those things. Well, thank you. Yeah. So you um, we're connected in the community. We sit on the Perry Township Religious Education Association Board, and you're a retired school connection <laughs> for many years. So tell us a little bit about your history in the community. Well, I taught 17 years at Clinton Young Elementary in Perry Township. <clears throat> I taught special education and retired four years ago. So I have six grandchildren, and I retired to spend time with them, and I volunteer in their classrooms now. Yeah, and you're amazing at what <clears throat> you do. There's so many of our family that are teachers and connected <laughs> in the school system, and I just think <clears throat> what a dedication of service. You know, today schools have changed so much, especially right. four years ago. That was kind of when COVID was all right. happening, right? Exactly. <laughs> so what were you seeing as a teacher in the community that was really like, what's changed since you started teaching? Actually, the needs of the children. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just, there's so many children left at home alone after school um, without supervision. The importance of the parents um, being there, not only in the home, but also being active in the school. We see such a difference when we have the support of the parents. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first made these for my book pillows for my grandchildren, I like the fact because they promote literacy. There's a book in there that promotes reading, yet it's also a pillow that gives comfort. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we think about literacy like, oh, if people get to the testing part like SATs and that they we find out that they can't read and write, but a lot of this starts very young, right? First exactly. grade. What we're expecting our kids to do today is a lot different than yes. it has been. Most Te- definitely. Well, how do you think technology has changed that? You know, with the iPhones and all the computers, do you think it's increasing the kids' ability to, to do certain skills like reading and writing? Well, I think hands-on with the books, we just don't see as much. They're reading a book maybe on the computer, but just that to curl up in their parents' lap and to read an actual book and being read, too, is so important for children. It's so important. Mm-hmm. It's so important. Well, I love that you have created these. Tell me how this idea started. Did you do this right when you retired, or when did this idea actually start? It was March of 2020, and I had retired at the end of May, well, when school ended in May, <clears throat> and I was at a store up in Noblesville, and I saw this pattern, and one of these book pillows was made and displayed in the store, and I right away fell in love with it because, again, it um, was just a neat thing for a child to have, but it also had the book included. So I bought the pattern and made six of them for our grandchildren, and then COVID hit, so we couldn't have Easter at our house, so we delivered them to the three homes. Three Our kids mar- are all married and have children. We delivered those, and then a week or so later, I thought, boy, those were fun to make, and they were easy, and I really think maybe I should, look, there's got to be a place out there that might want these donated. So I called the Ronald McDonald House here in Indy, and I asked if it was something they would be interested in, and they right away were very receptive. But I did say, I would really, and I don't know if this probably came from my teaching background, I said, I know the child that is ill would get the pillow, but could we also provide one for their siblings? I feel like they are suffering just as much um, because they're taken out of their home environment and sometimes living temporarily at the Ronald McDonald House. And they made a comment they had never had something to give to siblings, but they would be happy to do that. It would just mean more pillows would go out. Mm -hmm. So um, in April of 2020, I took them 12. And, of course, COVID, I couldn't even go in. I put them in a trash bag and had to leave them at the door and get back in my car. (laughs) And they came and took them. And then they said, oh, they would love to have 12 or more the next month. 
So that's when I contacted a couple of friends. I said, hey, I just obligated myself <laughs> to something. Would you want to help? And they were like, yeah, sure. So the next month we took 20. There were three of us. Mm-hmm. And um, now we are taking, last month we took 350 um, total. The month before that was 388. And this month in October, we are already probably approaching 340. Wow. So we take them to various locations now. That is amazing. And and I know we were talking um, before, and you've shared a lot with me just previous to this interview, but these are so cool because what you said is the the people that are actually making these, they get the material. Mm -hmm. And so they decide on the pattern that kind of connects to their heart. Mm -hmm. And yes, simple, but I don't sew. (laughs) So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. But they're so cute. And uh, everybody knows that I love monkeys. (laughs) This is such a great, uh, curious George here. It's uh, it's the book that matches the design of the pillow. And so you get these books donated too, right? Yes. When I originally started the first year, the friends that were making them with me, they provided the book. So if they had a dinosaur fabric, they would put a dinosaur book in. And then slowly we started getting some local people in the community that said, oh, well, you know, I can give you five or ten books every couple months. So right now, in the last two years, we let everybody bring their pillow, and then I just match them up. I have all the books at home, and we match them up. And it's helped because cost-wise, for someone to make one now, they don't have to provide a book. So they'll tend to make maybe a couple more pillows. Mm -hmm. Well, the design, you know, like I said, it's simple for people that sew. (laughs) (laughs) But you have the material inside and then the actual material. And the time that it takes, how long would you say that it takes to make one of these pillows? I would say 45 minutes. It takes probably 10 minutes to cut it out, Mm -hmm. cut the fabric out, and then maybe 45 minutes to completely make it and press it. And there are the um, pillow form just goes into the back, so they're all can be washable, which is important for the hospitals. And we do require all of our books are brand new, again, because so many, the majority of these are going into hospital settings. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are going into schools, but... A lot of hospitals. Well, it's so important to get the message out because there's there are so many organizations right now that are trying to, you know, figure out whether it's foster care Mm -hmm. groups or just kids that are in need that we need to resource them Mm -hmm. in all kinds of organizations. So I love this idea, you know, for the youth. Um, It could be for any age, though. Right. So people that need to feel a little bit more secure Mm -hmm. and connected to something that is is important to them that someone gave them. Yes. Right. Sometimes it's the only thing that that people have to hold on to when they're going through a tough time. Exactly. Resources of Hope, which is a nonprofit in Whiteland. Yes. We give them 15 a month. And so every foster child that comes through with a family gets to choose one. The Isaiah 117 house, which (laughs) recently opened, um, they have. Oh, they probably have 100 of them there ready for children. Because we like a child to be able to choose. We don't want to just give them one. We want them to choose something that means it's something special to them. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you brought in today because I know you have several different ones. Okay. That one's so cute. (laughs) This is one for more of a baby. Um, These go into the NICUs at Peyton Manning Hospital, uh, St. Francis, and uh, Riley Hospital. So cute. And then this is more of a school age one, a cat in the hat. For <laughs> <laughs> and great. here's a cat. This one's got a chapter book in, so that would be more for maybe a second, third, fourth grader. Mm-hmm. And then we do a lot of sports ones. Oh, yeah. The boys, the um, well, and girls really mm-hmm. get into the sports. Sports and superheroes are kind of our big ones right now. I love that. But this is the design. Like when you have these volunteers, they just say, Here's the pattern that I really think is important to me. Connect to it, and then they provide that to you. How do you get other funding? Like, what's the process for people that would say, hey, I want to give. I want to give a financial contribution to help you with the materials, with the books. How do we do that? Hi, this is Melanie Ake. When you visit EverydayLeaders.com, you'll find valuable resources to become a better leader in your life. Women's leadership programs, including Top Floor Women, our monthly networking events, corporate workshops, and strategic business coaching services. Discover classes and products to develop yourself, including our morning leadership devotionals. Don't forget, order one of my inspirational books, sign up for classes, or pick up some gear in the leader store. Listen to the Everyday Business Leaders podcast, apply to be a guest in our studio, or even sponsor your own commercial advertisement. 
Contact us today at everydayleaders.com. Well, we have... um we don't get too much fabric donated, but we occasionally do. We love that. Mm-hmm. If somebody wants to buy four or five yards of fabric, that makes it takes about a yard to make one pillow. So if they they are welcome to um, give monetarily, and we, we if they do that, we use the money for the book, the pillow insert in the back that makes the actually the, the pillow form mm-hmm. because that is probably the biggest expense. But right now, our volunteers just. Per, they do what they can. If they can mm-hmm. feel like they can afford to make 10 a month, they do. But we do welcome any kind of donations because it just makes us able to give more out That's to the community. Awesome. Um, Joe, show the, we've got a Facebook page that Kathy has, the Book Pillows of Hope. And so if you can bring that up, if you have, you can bring that up. There we go. So right now, it would be great if you guys went to Facebook, if you're watching this, go to Facebook and follow Book Pillows of Hope. We've got 399 likes 553 followers. Let's make that double. (laughs) I know all of our viewers have a heart to help our community. And so we've got so many nonprofits that I'm involved with the Aspire Johnson County group and both Resources of Hope and Isaiah Isaiah House are connected um, as part of our community members. So I think this is a great time for all of us, right? We've got over Mm -hmm. 700 members in our Johnson County Aspire um, Alliance. So we can, we can help you get those likes and get the word out about this organization because I think everybody needs to have like one more thing. Here's the holidays. Mm -hmm. And if there's people that maybe want to help you, um, you know, with sewing pillows, you might have another big community that says, Hey, I want to help do this. The police department has already asked for 70 in December for a Christmas program. Wow. We take the Southport police 20 a month and, um, IMPD Southeast just started with us last month, and we've been taking them 30 a month. Wow. So, and we are excited that we just um, kind of developed a partnership with Habitat for Humanity, and they are having a house dedication in Johnson County in November, and we're going to take two pillows for the children that will be moving into that home. Oh, my goodness. All these organizations (laughs) that have been a part of our program, or they're really connected to our mission. So I love this, just supporting each other. Mm -hmm. Um, So your mission statement, I wanted to read this too, because you always say, we can't fix the world's problems, but we will do what we can to make a difference where we can. And I think that is such a mission that everybody can connect to Mm -hmm. and saying, you either have been a child that maybe at a time Mm -hmm. in your life, you needed something secure like this. You're going through something. You have a niece, nephew, or family member or a friend, right? That may may want this as um, kind of a solution Mm -hmm. for a time in their life. So... I just, I love this. The hospitals, of course, are, you know, we have a passion around that. The school systems, the families that are kind of transitioning, and all of these new families that are are coming into our communities. Mm -hmm. I mean, my goodness, Johnson County and Southern Marion County alone are exploding in growth. Mm -hmm. So there's probably needs that we don't know about yet that um, this could really make Mm -hmm. a difference for. Exactly. Tw- uh, twice we have gone out of the community. Uh, two years ago, when they, at the um, Chicago Fourth of July parade where there was a shooting, we sent 150 of them there because they offered free counseling for any child that witnessed that. Wow. And then we did send 150 to Ukraine to a refugee center. And then we partnered with a school up in Westfield and wow. did that. Well, and I know you said you're going to Fort Wayne and also Evansville. Yes, all four Ronald McDonald houses, Indy, Fort Wayne, Evansville, and South Bend, now receive them every month. That's unbelievable. In fact, Fort Wayne has a mobile unit where they actually drive a mobile unit to a child's home for medical care. And they take, they actually would like 30 this month just to put on their mobile unit. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if somebody goes to your website, too, if they go to the, I'm sorry, the Facebook page, um, but if they go to the Facebook page, they can contact you. There's Definitely. a little message button right there. Everybody knows how Facebook works. <laughs> Get on there and contact Kathy because if you are, if you love to sew, if you have no other things on your agenda, <laughs> but this is something that they could do 45 minutes, oh, cut the goodness. material, and then yeah. watch your favorite show and, and make some pillows for you, exactly. right? Exactly. I cut out 10 yesterday and I'll have those made this week. I mean, it goes so quickly and they're fun. They're just fun to make because every one of them is different. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So tell me about Scott Swan, because I know that they did um, a promotion with you on Channel 13 here locally. And it says you um, they chose 13 um, 
local nonprofits to highlight, and so you were one of those, and you raised thirty four hundred dollars. Yes, Scott Swan has the Share the Love campaign, where he chooses a nonprofit, he introduces it on Monday. And then every day of the week, he touches just a few minutes on it and just asks people to give $5. Mm -hmm. Now, you can give more, but that's his plea. You know, just give $5. He sets a goal with the nonprofits of $2,000. Wow. So every day in the afternoon, he would have me call in the number we got because they don't deal with the money. It goes straight to a a money portal. Mm -hmm. And we were over to the $2,000 by Wednesday. Wow. So we were very excited because we didn't have actually any funds until we tried that. So it was a very neat opportunity. Scott Swan was a wonderful person to work with. That is awesome. Well, that's the thing, right? All of us have to get involved in the community to kind of see what everybody is doing specifically. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know we had Because One in here a few weeks ago, and the girls were talking about how they are matching donors with actual nonprofit organizations. So I think if people can actually see where their money goes, Exactly. Right? If they can get involved and say, hey, I can sew, I could sew 15 pillows, mm-hmm. you know, on a weekend because I've, I haven't done that in a long time, mm-hmm. but I'd like to give my time. So coming up on the holidays, I think this is a great ask for people. We've got, um, you know, the day of caring and the day of giving on November the 28th. Mm-hmm. But if you are looking to do something to get involved in the community, you have the skill set. I don't have the skill set, but I'm going to do something. <laughs> I'll go get some books. Book, yeah, that's uh, wonderful. Uh, because maybe I can learn to sew. Maybe you can teach me. <laughs> but I think this is a great cause. And so I want people to really rally around this and help Kathy with the mission to really reach out and help these kids that are in need. I think it's a great cause. Well, thank you. We, and every one of us enjoys doing it. And it warms your heart when you actually get to see a child choose one. We've had a couple children um, in the Indianapolis area that have passed away. And we've taken them to their entire classroom. And to see a child pick one, you know, to help remember their friend by, it is very heartwarming. It is heartwarming. Well, I think elementary kids, right, they have nap time still. So <laughs> they could have a book and they could have a pillow. So. <laughs> We need more volunteers. Could we get more pillows out there? (laughs) We love fabric. A lot of people, you know, will say, oh, I have extra fabric at home. I don't have anything to do with it. Will you take it? As long as it's children's fabric, we definitely accept that. That's awesome. Well, Kathy, thank you for coming by today. Thank you, Melanie. I really appreciate this time. This has really been fun. Um, I hope everybody, like, find your sister or a brother or whoever that you know sews in your family and get on this. This is a really great cause. And remember to go on Facebook. That's how you can find them. Book Pillows of Hope and like them, share it, and talk to our community about this. Um, So thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. it. So thank you for tuning in to this episode of Everyday Business and Community Leaders today. I hope you were inspired to think and grow differently about your business, how you can get involved with Kathy's organization, Book Pillows of Hope. Remember, the journey of growth and innovation never ends, and it's our mission to bring you the best insights from our local community. Stay tuned for more episodes where wisdom, innovation, and inspiration happen right here. This is Melanie Ake signing off from JP the Geek Studio, where better IT service is just a call away. They say own it, secure it, and protect it. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you'll never miss one of these episodes. Everyday Leaders helps you to develop strategies to become a better leader in your life. Remember, it's not what you do in a day. It's what you do every day that makes the most impact.